Okay, so this was De Broglie's hypothesis was just that the, the, we could ascribe a, a wavelength to any particle um, and that would be in the wavelength would be equal to uh, the Planck, Planck's constant divided by the particle's momentum and, and here I've written down the expression for the relativistic momentum of a particle. Okay, so this was sort of a revolutionary idea that we can think about um, particles as waves, okay? And I showed you sort of in the last experiment, we did the double slit experiment, um, but now I'm going to, um, we're going to work towards an actual, uh, an earlier experiment, so something which was actually the first experiment that was done that actually showed that this is true. Now, he did, uh, De Broglie did this work and made this hypothesis as a, as a PhD student, and he received the Nobel Prize just uh, four or five years after this, so just after he finished his PhD, so this is quite an accomplishment. So let's, just to give you an example of the scale of what such a wavelength would be, um, we can think about electron, modern day electron microscopy. So uh, a modern electron microscope basically accelerates electrons through a potential difference of about 100 kilovolts, could be less, could be more, but this is about, this is a rough scale, um, and basically shoots those electrons at a, at a sample and by looking at either what scatters off the electron, uh, the sample, what electrons, how the electrons scatter off, off the sample, or how they transmit through the sample, um, then you can uh, learn a lot about the structure of the sample. Okay, and so since since we're talking about electrons that have been accelerated through a voltage difference of 100 kilovolts, they obtain a kinetic energy after that acceleration um, of again about 100 kilo kiloelectron volt, so that's an energy unit, right? And um, so if we take the uh, de Broglie hypothesis, H over P, and we can rewrite that, we just multiply top and bottom by C, and that allows us to put things in a reasonably um, convenient unit. So if you remember on the last lecture we talked about how HC, um, one way to write the product, Planck's constant times the speed of light, is 12, 1240 electron volts times nanometers, um, and so we can rewrite this like that. Now, um, the other thing that we can do is we can, sh I'm not going to show this right now, but I'll, I'll leave this for a homework exercise, but we, it, we can show that the kinetic energy of a particle is equal to uh, the momentum squared, the three momentum squared divided by two times its mass, okay, the mass of the particle. So again, we multiply top and bottom by C squared this time and that allows us to get um, to solve for the quantity PC in terms of the kinetic energy and the rest energy, okay, MC squared, just like this. So now if we plug this this into here, okay, then we get this expression and so now what we see is that the um, the wavelength is inversely proportional to the square root of the um, kinetic energy, okay. And since the kinetic energy is linearly, is just directly proportional to the voltage um, in this sort of experiment, then you would expect that the wavelength is inversely proportional to the square root of the voltage difference that you use um, to accelerate electrons or any other charged particle. And the other thing to notice is that the, is that the, um, the wavelength is inversely proportional to the square root of the mass of the particle, okay? And so for something which is like a, a a normal particle, not a quantum particle, like again a bullet or a marble, which has uh, a mass that's much much larger than an, than an electron, um, then you would expect to see incredibly small wavelengths because m is just going to be very much bigger. Okay, so let's follow this through for an electron. Okay, electrons have a rest energy of 0 .4, 0 0.511 MeV, and again, if for kinetic energies of 100 kilo electron volts as we set up here. If we plug in those numbers, here's the 100 kilo, here's the 100 kilo electron volts. Um, here is the um, 0.511 mega electron volts. Here's the two. And if you work out the units, you get something, you get a wavelength of 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 nanometers. Now, I should point out that the uh, a hydrogen atom has a, has a characteristic size of about um, 10 to the minus 1 nanometers. So this is about 25 times um, smaller than, than hydrogen.